Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss about power MOSFETs. A power MOSFET is a voltage control device and requires only a small input current. The switching speed is very high and the switching times are of the order of nanoseconds. Power MOSFETs are finding increasing applications in low power high frequency converters. They do not have the problems of secondary breakdown phenomenon as BJTs do. However, MOSFETs have the problem of electrostatic discharge and require special care in handling. In addition, it is relatively difficult to protect them under short-circuited fault conditions. When it comes to categorization, MOSFETs are broadly categorized into two types depletion MOSFETs and enhancement MOSFETs. Further, under each category, there exist two more types of MOSFETs. One is the N-channel MOSFET, the other one is the P-channel MOSFET. Let us now go into discuss individually each type of MOSFET. Here we consider an N-channel depletion type MOSFET. An N-channel depletion type MOSFET is formed on a P-type substrate with two heavily doped N plus silicon for low resistance connections. The gate is isolated from the channel by a thin oxide layer. The three terminals of the MOSFET are called as drain, gate and source. The substrate is normally connected to the source. The gate to source voltage VGS could be either positive or negative. If, e if VGS is negative, some of the electrons in the N-channel area will be repelled and a depletion region will be created below the oxide layer, resulting in a narrower effective channel and high resistance from the drain to source called as RDS. If VGS is made negative enough, the channel will be completely depleted offering a high value of RDS and there will be no current flow from the drain to source, in which case the IDS becomes zero. The value of VGS when this happens is also called as the pinch of voltage represented by VP. On the other hand, if VGS is made positive, the channel becomes wider and IDS increases due to reduce reduction in RDS. Now for the P-channel depletion type MOSFET, the polarities of VDS, IDS and VGS simply are reversed. Now coming to the N-channel enhancement type MOSFET, if VGS is positive, an induced voltage will attract the electrons from the P-substrate and accumulate them at the surface just beneath the oxide layer. If the VGS is greater than or equal to a value known as the threshold voltage represented by VT, a sufficient number of electrons are accumulated to form a virtual N channel and the current flows from the drain to source. For the P channel enhancement, the polarities of VDS, IDS and VGS are simply reversed. Now coming to the Transfer characteristics of the MOSFETs, you can see for the N-channel depletion type MOSFET, the uh, VP, the threshold, pinch of voltage is negative, whereas for a P-channel depletion type, it is positive. For the N-channel enhancement type, it is positive. For the P-channel enhancement type, it is once again negative. Coming to the current itself, for the N-channel depletion type MOSFET, the current is positive. For the P-channel depletion, it is negative. For the N-channel enhancement type, it is positive. And finally, for the P-channel enhancement type, it is once again negative. Now, let us now continue to discuss the switching characteristics of the MOSFETs. Now, this we have taken for the enhancement as an enhancement type MOSFET as an example for illustration. Without any gate signal, an enhancement type MOSFET may be considered as two diodes connected back to back or as an NPN transistor. The gate structure has parasitic capacitances to the source represented by CGS 
and to the drain represented by CGT. The NPN transistor has a reverse bias junction from the drain to the source and offers a capacitance represented by CDS. Now the diagram A here shows the equivalent circuit of a parasitic bipolar transistor in parallel with the MOSFET. This is the BJT and it is in parallel with the MOSFET. The base to emitter region of the NPN transistor is shorted at the ship by metallizing the source terminal and the resistance from the base to emitter uh, due to the bulk resistance, sorry, the resistance from the base to emitter due to the bulk resistance of N and P regions represented by RBE is very small. Hence, a MOSFET may be considered as having an internal diode structure uh, as, it, as it is indicated in this diagram. The parasitic capacitances are dependent on their respective voltages. Now coming to the switching model, as we already have seen, in the switching model we have the effective capacitance between gate to source represented by CGS, gate to drain represented by CGD, drain to source represented by CDS and the effective resistance between drain to source is represented by RDS. And the switching times or the switching waveforms for the MOSFET can be seen here. Now, <clears throat> let us talk about how the switching waveforms perform or how the switching itself performs under the turn on or power best condition. You can see when an input voltage is applied across the gate terminal, the gate to source voltage steadily rises and becomes constant and once the gate voltage is removed, the gate to source voltage once again steadily decreases. However, when it comes to turn on and turn off, there are four particularly important time parameters that one must consider to understand the MOSFET switching performance. The turn on delay is the time that is required to charge the input capacitance to the threshold voltage level. Now this is the time taken to make sure the input voltage is equal to the threshold voltage of the transistor. As we all know, the minimum voltage that is required to trigger the transistor across the gate is threshold voltage. And the transistor will only turn on if the input voltage is either equal to or greater than the threshold voltage. Now the moment the input voltage becomes, the, or the, sorry, the, the moment the gate to source voltage becomes equal to that of the VT, the transistor starts to become a on device or it will start the transition towards its on state. The rise time represented by TR is the gate charging time from the threshold level to the full gate voltage VGSP represented by VGSP which is required to drive the transistor into the linear region of operation. Then once the VGS equal to VGSP, the device is said to be in the on state and then the voltage across VGS almost becomes constant. During the turn off, one has to simply make the gate voltage zero. There is no need of making the gate voltage negative as like what we have done for a BJT because there is no storage time concept in a MOSFET. Now in the turn off duration, there are two particular time parameters, time delay off and time for falling. Now the turn off time delay represented by TD off is the time required for the input capacitance to discharge from the overdrive gate value equal to V1 to the pinch off region. So this is what actually is the time delay off. Now after that, the gate, gate to source voltage starts to fall and from the moment it re, uh, starts to fall from VGSP till the moment it becomes zero is called as the fall time. And the fall time is the time that is required for the input capacitance to discharge from the pinch off region that is VGSP to the threshold voltage. Now it is very important to understand that the moment the gate to source voltage 
becomes lesser than or equal to the threshold voltage Vt, the transistor will turn off. So that is about an introduction to power MOSFETs and its switching characteristics. Thank you.